What's up softball players? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about college softball recruiting. Let's talk about specifically who D1 softball is wrong for. All right, so let's jump in here. So D1 sports are a crazy animal. Your schedule as a student is insanely packed. Your college experience is very different than a regular student. Uh, softball and baseball play so many games. I mean, just so many. It's a really big drain on your time, and it's a really big commitment. It's much different than even other sports, and it's much different than the lower levels where the schedules just have more flex in them, like a D3 schedule. The game schedules are much lighter. The fall schedules are much lighter. Um, so like D1 is really rigorous and it's it's a unique animal. So let's talk about some of the the, the students that are really not going to fit this quite as well. And the thing to remember is that as compared to baseball, because every year in baseball, there's the MLB draft and a lot of players ship off to pro baseball. The college softball draft is much smaller, right? The NPF and uh, Ath Athletes Unlimited, you know, that opportunity is to a much, much smaller percentage of college athletes. So we know that most of you softball players are going to go off into the real world, which is wonderful. So this is going to be the last four years that you probably play, unless you're one of these 1% studs that's going to go play NPF or Athletes Unlimited and play a little pro softball, which I hope you do. That's it's awesome. So the thing to remember, though, is that D1 sports are, again, very different. So let's jump into the first one. Number one here is that highly academic students are maybe not going to be a good fit for D1 softball. And the reason is you need to have a an insane, like your your schedule in the spring is insane. It's just insane. You're going to have a game on Tuesday. You're going to have a game on Wednesday. You're going to be traveling Thursday. You're going to have games Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the conference. And that's going to be your entire schedule for the whole spring semester pretty much. Obviously, you don't get going right away, but you get going pretty much right away. So that's going to be your whole schedule. And you're going to be trying to study on the bus, write papers on the bus. And you also still have to go to class just like every other kid. You'll usually do 12 credits instead of 15. But some most, I mean, a lot of players still do 15 because they want to graduate on time in four years. So it's just a really insane schedule in the spring. In the fall, it's easier, but not that much easier. You're going to wake up at 6 a.m. You're going to have your your conditioning workout, your strength training, or a pool workout, or you know, mobility, yoga, whatever it is. And then you're gonna have your normal practice between like two and six, that three or four hour chunk of time. And then you're gonna have to pack in all your classes between eight and uh, noon typically. So what this typically means is that a lot of majors that are really heavy in like, uh, like the sciences where they have tons and tons of labs, almost all those lab classes happen later in the day. Whereas all like the I guess like the lower level classes, and I don't exactly know the entire college structure, like why it's structured this way, but I do know that almost all the physics labs and chemistry labs and biochemistry and like the pre-law or the the, the, the pre-med um, pre stuff is going to happen between like two and five. That's when all those labs happen. And you can't miss those as a, as a student. And you also can't miss practice. Like they're going to give you a tiny bit of leeway, but especially if it's big time, like top 50 program, they're not going to let you miss you know, two practices a week, it's just not going to happen, or you're just going to sit the bench, you're gonna be done. So a lot of schools will tell you they'll be like, hey, you can't be a pre med major and play softball here it just doesn't work. Like we know the way the schedules are the way the teachers are, it just doesn't work. Or physics major is going to be so unrealistic to actually do that major well, that you'd be doing yourself a disservice. And it's not a smart idea to try to be a physics major, or a neurochemistry major or a computer science, uh, any of these like really hard, there's a lot of hard majors. Many of them are just not compatible with the crazy, insane D1 softball schedule. And they'll tell you that a lot of times. So you have to understand that if you're a, a highly academic kid, you want to be an aerospace engineer, or you want to be uh, you know, a doctor one day, or you want to be you know, a lawyer, it just might not work out. You might need to go D3. You might need to go to a different type of school where it's just going to be academically, they're going to be academics first and athletes second. And as much as they say student athletes at the D1 level, you're an athlete student. It's just, it's just mostly the way that it is. Number two, D1 is not gonna be right for you if you wanna play right away. This is gonna vary. There are some players that play as freshmen, but it's pretty rare. Number one, because as a high schooler, you're usually not physically developed enough to really compete at that level, right? Um, there's a pretty big gap between high school uh, senior and college freshmen. 
uh, especially college sophomore, junior, and senior, which most of the starting players are sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And the reason is you become more of an adult, you fill out, you grow a lot. Like I had a, hit a 20 pound uh, growth spurt. Um, I kept growing until I was 25. And you also have one full year of legit lifting, usually for the first time in your life in college. And you get a lot better nutrition. It's just like a really good environment to pack on weight. So you're trying to compete with players who are like 30 pounds of muscle bigger than you as a freshman. It's hard. You know, you'll start lifting right away as a freshman, but it's just hard. Like you're not gonna be able to pack on all that weight right away. So you're just going to be at a disadvantage to all the players that have already been there and been through the program. That's just like a natural progression of it. So you have to understand that if you really desperately want to play all four years, a lot of players go to lower levels just to do that. They know that I'm not going to be able to go to Mizzou and start at second base right away. I'm not going to be able to go to Alabama or to Wisconsin and be the starting shortstop because they these are successful programs. They've got to have good players at all those positions. So there's people already there starting, right? It's, it's not easy to sneak your way in there. So if you need to start right away, then going D1 might not be the best fit for you. Number three, D1 might not be for you if you want a really diverse campus life. Again, we talked about the schedule, and I didn't hit on this as much, so I want to hit on it now. We talked about the insanely rigorous softball schedule. And for people like me, like I played college baseball, and I loved it. Like I want, like I was all baseball all the time. And if you're all softball all the time, then you'll probably love it too. And you get built-in friends. It's it's a cool lifestyle. Don't get me wrong. But if you want to be in the poetry club or the, you know, like, uh, I don't know, there's all these different clubs. I don't know anything about the clubs because I couldn't be in any of them, right? So I'm no expert. But you're not going to have a normal student life. You're just not. You're not going to get to go on spring break ever. You'll be on, you'll be playing softball. Um, you're just not going to be able to do all the other things that normal college students do. You'll still be at a party and like, you know, college athletes like drink and do all that normal stuff. I'm not advocating, but it, obviously it happens. Um, you'll still be able to find your ways to do all those things, but just like in a way smaller dose. And it's just not going to be the same. It's just not the same student life, just not even close. So it's a lot more, I don't know how I would phrase it. It's a lot more like being a celebrity, except no one cares that you're an athlete. Like you're just whisked away to do your own separate thing at all times. So, you know, it's one of those things where you have to really figure out. And a lot of players do this where they're like, you know, I just don't want to play D1 softball. I just want to go play club. I want to go to get the big D1 uh, experience. I want to go to all the football games and I want to be in the stands for all that stuff. But again, you're not going to be able to go to the Saturday college football games. Um, you're going to have practice, right? It's just like lots of stuff you, you will miss out on. It's all trade-offs. So it's completely up to you. It's really cool experience being a D1 athlete, but there's trade-offs. So if you want to have this really diverse student life, then D1 might not be right for you. My last one, number five here, D1 sports are not for athletes that need to be coddled. So if you really struggle with player, with coaches who are hard on you, if you don't like the brutal training environment, if you need someone to always talk nice to you, you're probably going to get chewed up and spit out. And I know this is an increasing problem with Gen Z and younger, whatever the next generations are. But look, it's a fast pace. And if you don't fit, they're just going to get rid of you. They don't, they're not going to be like... Yes, let me explain. Here's why we don't like your swing. It's going to be like, do the drill, figure it out, hit the ball, like, let's go. Obviously, there's great coaches. Obviously, there's a lot of patient coaches. I'm not saying that they're all just like monsters because they're not. But this is a high pressure, high energy. These coaches are more highly paid. Like, they know what they're doing. They have a system and you need to conform to it. And there's going to be individualization, don't get me wrong, but they're not there to hold your hand and treat you like a child. They're there to treat you like an adult. And a lot of players, boys and girls, they go to college and like, this sucks. I just get yelled at all the time. I don't feel like I can do anything right. This The workouts are brutal. Um, this isn't for me. It's much more like a drill instructor, like a going off to boot camp than it is, you know, having fun with your with your pals. You know, your parents aren't going to be able to bail you out if your parents bail you out now and and pat you on the head all the time and bring Gatorade to the dugout when you're when you're thirsty. It's not that environment. So if you're one of those people who really wants to be, I know no, one, no one's going to admit that they want to be coddled, right? But you just need to understand, it's a tough environment. It's brutal and it's really hard. And it, especially when you're slumping and you're just getting, your body's getting beat up and you're injured and you have 6 a.m. workouts and you're struggling in school, it's a lot. So just understand that that's not right for everyone and that's okay. And you should have whatever college experience you want, but D1 sports can be an amazing one. And it can also be a really brutal and hard one. And that's why a lot of players, they, they quit 
They transfer, they go to lower levels. It doesn't work out for a lot of them, many more than you realize. So these are all just hopefully good food for thought items when you're looking at colleges and also just considering. Because in most cases, you're not going to be this slam dunk, I have 15 different D1s offering me. Most of the time, it's like I got three or four D1s and a couple of D2s and like a bunch of D3s. Um, but you're going to have to like, do I, will I really play at these four D1s? Like I like this D1, but I don't love these two. So my only options are like two of them. And do I really think I'll play? Like they have an amazing junior center fielder and I'm a center fielder. Like there's just a lot to consider where the only couple of D1 offers just might not be right for you. Or you're just like unsure if you really want to roll the dice because you might not play because you're not getting a very big scholarship offer. So maybe you should go to the smaller school where you get a bigger offer because that means they're going to, you know, they've got something invested in you. There's just a lot of complicated things to, to talk through. And hopefully this video was a help in just, you know, pushing you in one direction or the other. All right. Obviously, you've got to still develop and let it play out and see what happens. Right. But anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description links below. If you're still working on your game, you need to throw harder, you know, improve your routines, improve your strength training. I have online courses that will help you with all that. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.